welcome gold members to this episode of our Wrestlemania special. Today we're going to be reviewing Wrestlemania 2000. Wrestlemania 2000 was released in 1999 and was the first WWF game released by THQ. Thanks for that intro, Glenn Dust. Until this release, WCW fans had World Tour and Revenge to play for the N64, and WWF fanatics had Warzone and Attitude. The WCW games were drastically different than the WWF games, opting for polygonal characters and easy to learn gameplay, as opposed to the smooth textured characters and complex moves in the WWF games. I always preferred the WCW games by far, even though I'm a diehard WWF fan and thus I was thrilled to find out that THQ was making a WWF game, WrestleMania 2000 for the N64. I was not disappointed. WrestleMania 2000 plays nearly identical to Revenge, and that is a good thing. The characters in the game reflect the WWF roster of autumn 1999, and the characters that aren't in the game can be made pretty darn well with the Creator Wrestler feature. Up to four players can battle out in a variety of modes including Raw Rumble, Triple Threat, tag team and cage matches. Gamers can also play solo and attempt to capture any of the WWF's title belts. The game takes you through a calendar year when you pursue the WWF title and you participate in all of the major events such as the Royal Rumble match, King of the Ring tournament along the way. Most wrestlers in the game are very good lookalikes of their counterparts and each wrestler's movements do justice to the real thing. The people's elbow executed by The Rock mimics a real guy perfectly and D'Lo Brown's head swaggering Swagger is here. The use of polygons does lead to clipping at times, but it's nothing major. I prefer these graphics over those used in Warzone and Attitude. Sound, however, is not the game's strong point. The character's music is decent, but is better in No Mercy. And no other tunes will stick in your mind as particularly good, as they are very low quality along with the entrance videos, no doubt in order to cram them onto the cart. The sound effects are okay though, and the ding sound when an opponent is dealt a low blow is a nice touch. The spirit meter used in Revenge is back, though it now it's called the attitude meter. It still functions the same way. Every player has an attitude meter. It starts small, but as you dish out punishment, it grows longer. When you get hit, it shrinks a little. If the bar grows to the length of the meter, it will disappear and be replaced by the word special. During this time, your wrestler can exchange the opponent in a strong grapple and toggle the analog stick to execute their finishing move. Wrestlers in special also tend to counter moves more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the special meter will wear off and the attitude meter will reset, having to be built up all over again. Moves are done from a simple standing position when grappling, when running on the ropes and when on the top turnbuckle, or when in the corner and when an opponent is down. Weak grapples lead to average moves which are difficult to counter. Strong grapples lead to the more lethal moves but can be countered more easily. Weapons can be used as well, you can pull them from the crowd and bash your opponent to bits with them. Perhaps the best aspect of the game is to create a wrestler feature. The number of moves available to bestow on your wrestler is mind numbing. I set out to make Chris Benoit and I made him just perfect with all the moves he ever used, including his rolling German suplexes, dragon suplex, crippler crossface STF, gut wrench suplex, pendulum backbreaker and swan dive headbutt. There are literally thousands of moves to choose from. Many of these moves are used only in Japan and then only rarely. Wrestlers can also be given taunts and their appearance can be customised down to their facial hair and wristbands. My only complaint in the game is with the cage match which I think could have been better. It's essentially a normal match with the added task of climbing out of the cage to the floor to secure the win. The problem is, a large portion of the match consists of knocking your opponent down and frantically climbing the cage only to be shaken off at the last minute and crashing to the mat. Often both players will climb the cage a dozen times or so before they actually make it out. It's a good idea, but it didn't come off well in this game at all. This game has tons of replay value, particularly with a few friends around. You can literally spend hours creating the perfect wrestler, and the career mode increases replay value even more. The most fun, of course, is when other people are around you to play with. Tag matches and triple threat matches are great fun, and me and my friends have gotten into many good-natured arguments during triple threat matches with one person accusing the other two of conspiring against them. This game is fantastic, though No Mercy beats it out in every sense, so you get that game instead. If you do happen to find this game cheap though, you can't go wrong, and it's a solid investment even for non-wrestling fans. You know a game had an impact on you when you remember getting it. In my case, it was two weeks after my birthday and I got it brand new with holographic wrestler cards inside. 
what are your memories of WrestleMania 2000? Let me know in the comments below and thumbs up if you enjoyed this nostalgia trip and Glendust will be back for another episode.